Last year at uh, Phospho-G in uh, Melbourne, I uh, spoke on my work with the Digital Earth Australia team, with David Gavin, on, um, on uh, web services for the Open Data Cube. Um, this uh, talk is really about a, um, another project that, that's, that's come up since. Um, so the Platforms for Open Data uh, project is a Australian government program that uh, lets Australian government departments propose small projects based around open data. And if those government departments are successful in their in their in their uh, uh, proposals, then they get to work on that. They get funding to work on that project with Data 61 for a year or so. Uh, they're usually small, self-contained projects, or sometimes uh, pilots for larger projects. Um, this uh, particular um, uh, 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 proposal came from Geoscience, from Geoscience Australia again, a uh, different part of Geoscience Australia to to uh, Dave's section. Um, and it's, yeah, as you saw from the title, it's about a historical aerial photography archive. Um, before Earth observation satellites, there were aeroplanes. Some of you might have had some experience with them recently. Um, and before digital photography, there was film. Um, Geoscience Australia has inherited an extensive archive of historical aerial photography imagery um, from its predecessor organisations. Uh, there's around a, a bit over a million images, stretches right back to the 1920s, uh, well into the um, satellite era. Uh, yeah. um, there's full coverage of Australia uh, and more. Uh, there's uh, several Pacific Islands that were at one point administered by Australia. Uh, have, there's imagery of those as well, Western Samoa, Tonga, Papua New Guinea, Fiji, and so on. Um, the temporal coverage varies. Uh, more remote parts of the country might only have one or two images across the history of that archive. Uh, more, inter more interesting uh, areas, uh, um, areas of interest to mining, um, uh, rich pastoral lands, capital cities and so on, uh, can to be photographed much more frequently. Overall, it's an absolute goldmine of historic mapping imagery. Uh, this is the second Platforms for Open Data project that I've worked on based on an historical archive. Uh, the previous one was to do with historic, uh, historical electoral data from the Australian Electoral Commission. Uh, so this seems like a good opportunity to make a few general observations about features common to working with historical archive uh, data. Um, the canonical source of truth is inevitably pieces of paper, um, and they're often handwritten and quite difficult to decipher. Um, there's often been multiple attempts through the decades at, at, at digitising this information. Um, in theory, that should make our job now easier. In practice, it often makes it harder because some of those uh, efforts at digitisation weren't really very well um, done. Uh, so you, you will often have to deal with duplication of, of data and, of, and compounding errors too, where people have, have taken, er taken material from a previous attempt and, and munged it up further. Um, ideally, you have to go back to the original data, although even the accuracy of that is often kind of questionable. Um, <laughs> there's usually a, a historian role whose, whose job it is to actually sift through and collate uh, this, uh, these pieces of paper into something um, uh, machine readable, because uh, <laughs> I don't want to have to do that. Um, uh, that's, that's, that's usually the form of spreadsheets. Um, the data model also, spreadsheets are good because they're, they're, there's very low barrier to entry, so the all historian can be an historian, they don't have to be particularly digitally literate. Uh, also, the data model tends to evolve radically over time, and assumptions you have about the data going in, tend to, uh, you often find uh, significant exceptions to as the, as the project goes on. Um, so, your implementation also has to be flexible and open-minded. You can't be all that picky about data integrity because you can't really impose integrity after the fact. Uh, you have to make the best of what you've got. So, what have we got? Um, we've got a lot of these. This is a flight line diagram. Uh, it contains the metadata effectively for the, uh, for the, the, the actual imagery. Um, this one is from the early 1960s. Uh, it's fairly neat. It has these lovely, uh, neat, letter-setted um, uh, lettering. Uh, early ones are often hand lettered or uh, even the later ones are often hand annotated. There's little hand annotations in the corner. Um, most of the, uh, many of these, document, uh, these diagrams were scanned in the, in the 90s, but they were fairly poor quality, low resolution black and white scans. And there's uh, a lot of information that was lost in that scanning process. So we're, going to have, we're having to go back to the originals and rescan them again 
out in, in, in colour with higher you know, with higher resolution. Uh, there's you can't see it in this one, but a lot of them do have uh, colour markups and things that are completely lost in the black and white scans. Uh, some of the low resolution scans are so illegible that it took us many months before we realised that they were actually the same image. <laughs> um, Uh, so yeah, and the imagery itself is not on pieces of paper, but it's on strips of celluloid, which is just as well, even more inconvenient, really. Um, <laughs> and all this beautiful metadata, even though we, we've, we've, we, can ca we can capture fairly easily, is is really tentative. Uh, until we've actually pulled the actual uh, and scanned the actual imagery and, and georeferenced it, we can't be that sure that the plane actually drove, flew in that really neat straight line that we have over there. Um, but you can't build paper with paper. We can't build software with paper and celluloid, so we need to digitise it. Um, the flight line digitisation on the right here is, is, is fairly simple. We take the archival diagrams, we do high resolution scans, and then we georeference them. So we have uh, we have those those flight paths and those little uh, frame numbers as uh, points and lines in a geodatabase. Um, that's fairly advanced. I think we're sort of 80, 90 percent complete. It's really just those last few that need a bit of hand tweaking um, to, to, to get done left. Uh, the film digitization is uh, a lot more complicated and a lot less advanced. So we start with our archival film stock. We have to do our, there's not these lovely high resolution scans of them, which requires uh, specialist scanning equipment. Uh, the film has to be taken out of cold storage and slowly raised up to room temperature over 24 hours and then carefully scanned because old film is very brittle and then packaged back up and slowly cooled down again and put back in there. So it's, it's a very expensive and laborious manual process. Uh, we had some, oh, the team had some funding a few years back and about 20% of the archive is scans, so about 200,000 images. Uh, there's obviously a lot more to go uh, and we're really, one of the main reasons for this project is really to raise awareness of the archive and try and raise that money to complete the, the scanning because it is getting urgent, film doesn't last forever. Um, the uh, other the Australian states have similar smaller archives of their own, uh, as indeed does New Zealand. I spoke to Land Information New Zealand yesterday about their historical aerial ph photography archive. Uh, many of those restrictions are actually more digitally mature than, than GA. They've, they're much more well advanced in their scanning, in their scanning program. Uh, they do have uh, the imagery available on, on software platforms, but they do tend to be uh, little proprietary platforms that they're quite sort of locked into and they don't really talk to each other very well. Um, we're trying to do build something in a much more open way that hopefully will get some cross jurisdictional adoption because uh, cross archive federated search is, would be really the, uh, the, 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 gold, the gold standard at the end of all this. Uh, so, what am I actually doing? Um, open data, uh, Creative Commons, all the imagery will be released under Creative Commons by attribution license. Um, open source, the code will all be, is all Apache um, 2 licensed. Uh, we're, I won't say we're sticking to digital standards, we're certainly, uh, open standards, we're certainly being uh, heavily influenced and, and, and by, by open standards. Uh, we, it's, a, it's a RESTful um, API returning GeoJSON for the most part. Um, the uh, ge the um, spatiotemporal aspects of the queries are identical to the spatiotemporal syntax for, for the stack domain protocol. Uh, I'm also thinking about uh, WFS3. I haven't done anything with that yet, but I think it'll be very easy to build a, WF, a WFS3 compatible gateway to the stuff I am writing. Uh, it's all built in Python 3 using the Django REST framework. Uh, current status is API, API only. Um, <coughs> we won't be building a UI as part of this one year pilot project, but uh, we'll, the, uh, once I finish this API, uh, GA team internally will be building a, a pretty UI for it. Um, that's our URL for the source code. Uh, we just opened it up about two days ago. <laughs> I rushed it for this, for this talk. Uh, we will move to uh, GitHub uh, shortly, but at the moment that's the, the Bit Bitbucket address. Um, <clears throat> the database uses a star schema pattern. Um, so that's a, a denormalized schema optimized for search. Uh, this was something I pushed for heavily uh, in, the, in the beginning of the project. Um, 
the team had a much more uh, normalised uh, you know, uh, type uh, of schema in mind, but I, I was able to, to convince them that, that because it's historic data, it's, the integrity is not that good, so there's no point in building a database that enforces integrity, it just actually makes their life harder. Um, <laughs> And uh, it was really about getting, the important, the important thing is to get nice, nice fast searches, which we have, so it's working really well. Uh, the data model and the loader strips are still fairly uh, GA-centric. Uh, if and when we get other restrictions on board, I'm looking forward to being able to really uh, break that metadata down into what's, what's core and what is archive-specific. Um, but uh, yeah, it's all coming along quite nicely. Um, so what have we got so far? Uh, we have spatiotemporal search as per the stack uh, standard, as I mentioned before. Uh, we can search by a bunch of other interesting um, metadata fields. So a, a client, so which, which government agency of the day paid for that flight uh, at the time. It's usually things like the uh, so, you know, Australian Mapping Authority or the um, Australian Army or, or, or whatever. Um, film number and barcode, which are really internal things for, 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 for GA in terms of, ma of managing their archive. Um, whether or not the imagery is digitised yet is a Boolean flag, you can only, only search for the digitised imagery. Uh, we can search by a site and geographic. There are about three or four fields in the database that hold like uh, alphabetic geographic name for whether uh, site names, and we do uh, you know, uh, pattern matching in all three to get that working. Uh, we can search by the, all the, most of these imageries are indexed at the National Library of Australia, so we can search by the National Library of Australia uh, ID codes. Um, camera type, camera orientation, film spectrum, um, uh, we can also search by as well. Most of the imagery is black and white, particularly the historical stuff. Um, some of the more recent stuff is, is black and white uh, infrared imagery, and the very recent stuff is, is all in colour. Um, <clears throat> geometrically, we have the we have, you know, these lovely multi-line geometries for our um, for our flight lines. We have point information for the for the uh, actual images. Because we don't have uh, very many much imagery actually georectified yet, and, um, the footprints is, are just are generated and, and, and guessed based on the direction the plane was flying and, and roughly how big a footprint would be. Um, but again, all that information will have to be re calculated once we actually do the proper scans. Uh, the output is um, mostly paginated uh, JSON, which is what uh, Django REST for Homework uh, uh, spits out. So I can either, we can either have a choice, you can either have uh, a JSON with GeoJSON embedded in it, or you can actually just have a, a GeoJSON object with all the metadata in, in the properties field. Uh, and I do currently have an unpaginated option. It's a lot more expensive, it takes a lot longer because you're pulling more, button, more, more data back, but it makes it a lot easier to do things like drop in Terrier for, for doing quick demos. There is not enough funding to do this archive justice. Uh, as I said, this, this uh, project is really about raising a, shining a, a spotlight on this, on this uh, archive and making people more aware of it. Uh, oh, there we go. So there's our off-flight lines, yay. <laughs> This is really about making people more aware of, of, of this archive and attracting more funding in future so we can make this archive, this rich treasure trove, available to the Australian people to whom it ultimately belongs. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Do we have any questions from the audience? Uh, Alex has one up front here. You're very good at adhering to standards, Paul, and uh, I really like that. Uh, I couldn't help but notice that your GeoJSON has uh, uh, EPSG or an SRS in it. And yes, it does. That breaks the standard. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, depending, it depends which standard you look at, yes, it does. Uh, it's, 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 it's a widely supported uh, variation on the standard. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, at the moment it's just returning that because that's what the database is stored in. Um, but yes, we should really be returning it in EPSG 4326, yeah, whatever, 84, that one, yeah. <laughs> okay, question down the back. Um, so the TIFFs that you can get historically, are they good enough quality to be used in an analysis? So to compare, say, this old imagery with maybe current satellite imagery and then you can take a look uh, Oh look, this has come up now so I can show you. So th uh, this is a mosaic that, that Dave put together. Um, so on the left, in the, this is the black and white film imagery and you can uh, I'll actually zoom in a bit for more and that'll take ages to, to fill out. It's, it's much higher resolution than the satellite data. Um, it is only one band, 
but uh, it is it's much more accurate, and you can and, it, and yeah, there's, it's really well georectified um, when that's eventually loads and comes crisp. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, it's, it's it's ready to go and ready to use, and and you can see. Oh, look, this tree has been there for fifty years. Um, yeah, if it's big enough to show up on Sentinel two. <laughs> Just as a follow-up, what kind of resolution do we expect out of this? Is it like 30 centimetres around about, or better, or worse? Um, it, it depends on how big the film was and what height they were flying at, um, but it's, it's, some of it is, is certainly that sort of level, yet. Yeah. What's the scanning resolution on the negatives? Um, oh, sorry, could you repeat the question? So it has to be here. What's the scanning resolution on the negatives that, they, that you use? Yeah, I, 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 I can't answer that question. It's not my field of expertise. Um, but uh, yeah, they're, they're fancy machines they use, that's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we have time for one more question, just over here. Um, the issue of cooperation between all the different states and federal, it seems to be constantly an issue with all these sorts of projects. I mean, how are you getting traction, or are you getting enough traction with cooperation you know, um, on this sort of thing? Most jurisdictions have uh, have uh, expressed interest in what we're doing. At least um, they're certainly watching what we're doing. Um, but you know they're held back right too. I mean, we because we they, this stuff in the ar federal archive that they don't necessarily have access to. They would like to have access to that too. Having it in a single system <coughs> makes sense for everyone. Um, the the nitty gritty of actually rolling it out will be political and messy. But uh, in principle, there's a lot of interest. All right, please uh, thank Paul again.